Natasha of natashaskitchen.com. I'm going to my sister's house tomorrow and I want to make something sweet, something memorable, because I know if I don't bring the dessert, it might come from Fred Meyer. <laughs> Not that my sisters aren't great bakers, they just usually bake for special occasions. I'm kind of the wild one. I bake all the time, obviously. So I'm gonna make something good, but I want it to be something easier because I have some other things that I wanna cook for tomorrow. So I have the perfect cake. It's an easy tiramisu. You guys are gonna love this, so stay tuned. All right, guys and gals, let's get our aprons on and get cooking. It's great to have all your ingredients lined up, so let's go over everything you'll need. You'll need six eggs, one cup of sugar, one cup of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of vanilla, for the syrup, you'll need about a cup and a half of strong coffee with a little bit of rum. Then you, for the cream, you'll need an eight ounce package of cream cheese, one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream, and about a half a cup of sugar. Then you'll need a little bit of great cocoa powder to dust over the top to make it extra delicious. Crack all of your eggs into a mixing bowl. Yolks and whites together, you don't have to separate them. That's the beauty of this recipe. Kick up the mixer to high speed and let it beat for about a minute. It should be frothy when it's done. Now while it's on high speed, slowly add in your one cup of sugar. And then continue to let it beat for another five minutes. It should be thick and three times in volume when it's done. While you've got your mixer going, go ahead and butter your pan. So I use my hands. You can use a pastry brush if you don't want dirty fingers, but... It's okay to get dirty a little bit in the kitchen, right? All right, so line the sides. You can use two separate cake pans for this, but I like to use my springform mold and just cut the cake layers in half. I think that's a little easier, but you can do it both ways. All right, once you've got that all buttered up, you also wanna line the bottom with some parchment paper. Parchment paper works best. Wax paper will stick, so use parchment. Set that aside. Now we're going to sift the flour. So this is a really important step because you want this cake to be light and airy and sifting is really a quick step. So easy. All right, you know it's done because it's tripled in volume. It's nice and thick. Look at that. It's a good pale yellow. It's finished. So what we're going to do next is sift our flour right into this batter. So you're basically sifting the flour twice. And you can do it in two portions. So basically fold in the first portion and then add in the second portion. Might be a little easier to blend it that way. Sometimes I'm lazy and just do it all at once and that's okay too. And when you're mixing, just try and mix it enough to get the flour well incorporated into the batter. You're really relying on the volume of the eggs to make this cake fluffy. So don't deflate it. That's key in making this cake. You see how thick and beautiful that is right now? All right, we can add the rest of our flour. Just sift it right in. And just continue mixing. Make sure to get it from the bottom too, just in case you have little pockets of flour down there like that. This is a European cake. We call it the biscuit. You might refer to it as the biscuit cake. It's a sponge cake and it's excellent just to absorb those syrups that you'll use in cakes. Um, you'll see this cake all over my blog. It's the base to some of my favorite cakes. So once you've got this down, you know how to make most of the cakes on my blog. And it's so easy. Before I forget, oops, sometimes I do forget and that's okay. Add a teaspoon of vanilla. And that just adds some really good flavor to this cake. Luscious. All right, now that it's done, I'm gonna transfer it into my prepared pan. Even out the top of your cake, and then it's ready for the oven. You're gonna bake this at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, and when it's done, a toothpick should come out clean. Let the cake cool for about 10 minutes once it comes out of the oven and then um, get it out of the springform mold. I use a really thin edge spatula. 
and put it on a uh, wire rack to cool down. And you're gonna let it cool down all the way to room temperature. You're not gonna frost a warm cake or your frosting's gonna melt. So once it's cooled down to room temperature, and it is now, use a serrated knife to score the sides of the cake. We're gonna cut it into two layers. So you wanna score it so that you're cutting it exactly into two even pieces and just work your way around it. You're not cutting all the way through just yet. We're just scoring. All right, now we've made it all the way around. So next what you're gonna do is just go a little deeper and just continue that process until you've got two cake layers. And then make sure also to take off that parchment paper on the back. It comes off real easy. Ta-da, it's done. Beauty. All right, now we're gonna work on the frosting. To make a great frosting with heavy whipping cream, you have to make sure it's super cold. So this is straight out of the fridge. We're gonna kick the mixer up to high speed and we're gonna mix the heavy cream. It just takes about two minutes to get it to nice stiff peaks. You don't wanna overbeat it because then it'll turn into a buttery texture. We don't want that. All right, you can see that cream is done because it's got stiff peaks. It's not buttery. You don't want to keep beating it any more than that. It's perfect. All right, now transfer your whipped cream into a separate bowl because you're going to whip the cream cheese with the sugar next. And in that same bowl and using the same whisk, no need to wash it. Think about the dish factor. Add in that cream cheese and your half a cup of white sugar. You're going to beat that on high speed for a couple minutes just until it's nice and creamy. You can see it's starting to get nice and creamy and it's a great idea to scrape down the bowl at least once so that you're not getting gobs of cream cheese in your frosting. We want it to be a nice, smooth consistency. All right, that looks perfect. Now we're gonna incorporate that whipped cream right back into this cream cheese and just blend it together until it's perfect. You're just gonna blend this until you don't see the streaks of cream cheese anymore. You also wanna make sure it's really well blended if you're gonna put it through a piping bag so it doesn't get stuck with that cream cheese in there. Okay, frosting's done. So what we're gonna do is set this in the fridge until we're ready to use it. All right, generally you want your top layer to be the prettiest side. So we can see that the bottom layer here has the flattest, most perfect sides. So we're gonna take the top, flip it upside down, because the sponge is what you want to absorb that liquid, and that's gonna be our base. Then you're gonna make your coffee syrup. You need about a cup and a half of strong coffee. I use three shots, I'm gonna add it to some water. And then you need a couple tablespoons of sugar to sweeten it up a little bit. And just stir that to dissolve it. And then if you're feeling really awesome, you can put in a couple teaspoons of rum. You can totally omit this. You can even use a little bit of vanilla if you want to. Just adds an extra little something something. All right, once that sugar's dissolved, what you're gonna do is brush that syrup generously onto your cake, okay? So you should get rid of about half of this syrup by the time you're done. And I like to brush it on, it takes a little bit longer, but you know, if you just pour it on, you get these big globs of syrup in there, and we don't want that. We want it to be evenly distributed. I wish you guys could just lean in and smell this. Oh, coffee with rum, yum. All right, nice and moist. So next, we're gonna use about a fourth of our frosting and spread it evenly over the top. My cakes generally aren't perfect, I admit, but they're generally delicious, and that's really what matters most here, right? Now we're gonna put on the next layer of cake. And put the rest of your syrup evenly over the top. Before frosting the cake, let's clean up the sides a little bit. That way, if any extra frosting falls down, it won't get into the syrup. You could lick the plate, 
I guess. <laughs> if you're the only one eating the cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're gonna go to the frosting. And with the tiramisu, you can frost the top, you can frost the sides, you can really get creative with it. And if you make this and post it online somewhere, tag me so I can see it. I'd love to see your creations. You guys get so creative with the cakes. All right, cake is all smoothed out and done. Got a little bit of frosting left, so I'm gonna decorate. Smoothed it out to the best of my abilities. Don't laugh. <laughs> I'm gonna use a Wilton 1M um, tip and a piping bag to do the decoration. All right, prime your uh, frosting bag, piping bag, whatever, with frosting, and just kind of start making little circles. Just make a pretty little design. All right, we're all done frosting, and we're going to dust the top with cocoa powder. And I've got the real stuff here from the House of Chocolate in France that my friend Ina brought for me. So just dust it on there. Don't be scared. And you're done. So pretty and delicious too. Yum, now that is the perfect tiramisu. I hope you guys enjoyed spending time with me in my kitchen.